Hi everyone, uh, this is a video for 1.3 part 2 number 6. Uh, this question is asking you to compare two functions and decide if they are genuinely the same function or not. So the word for that is equivalent functions. And it says in the direction that there's two things that have to happen for them to be equivalent. They have to be algebraically the same. Uh, meaning basic algebra rules say that we should be able to turn one into the other and they have to have the same domain. And the domain sometimes is the tricky part because there are a lot of things that we do in algebra that actually change the domain of what we're working with and we kind of ignore it temporarily because we just want to be able to work with them. Um, okay, so for example, g to h in this first part, those are algebraically the same thing. Algebra says that roots split over multiplication, so it's supposed to be a legal step for us to split that square root up. Domain that we need to look at here says, I'm going to look at h first because I think it's easier. For the first square root, has to be x has to be greater than or equal to 5. For the second square root, x has to be greater than or equal to negative 7. And then the question becomes, how do we combine that? And the answer is, if either one of those statements is false, you're in trouble. So if we think on a number line, always helps me organize negative 7 out here and 5 out here. If we pick a number that's way out here, say we pick negative 10, that's going to be really bad. That's not going to work for the first square root because we get square root of negative 15, and then the second one we get square root of negative 3, so this is definitely bad. We don't want to be out here. If we choose something in the middle, let's choose 0, um, the first square root is trouble. I get square root of negative 5. The second one is okay, but that's not good enough. If either one of those is not a real number, then we're out of luck, so we still don't want to be here. We have to go way out over here to this side before both square roots are happy. So we actually want the most restrictive part of this. We want to say that x has to be greater than or equal to 5 if we want the function h to work. For g, um, there's more than one way to do this. You can kind of number line your way through this as well if you want. In fact, I think I'll do that. But I'll also tell you that the way I like to do it is to graph the parabola. So ignore the square root temporarily and graph that. That has x-intercepts at 5 and negative 7. And that's kind of what we're summarizing on the number line. And then think about the fact that we want that y values to be positive if we're going to take their square root. But if we want to do the number line again, we could say, okay, there's definitely key interesting points at negative 7 and 5. Uh, we get 0 at both of those, and it's legal to take the square root of 0, so that's great. If I try something like, same things, negative 10, that's going to give me negative 15 times negative 3 under the square root, which becomes positive 45, and that actually works. So we're good out here. This is what's different. Um, and for function h, if both factors are negative, that's doubly bad. For fact, uh, function g, if both factors are negative, that's actually good. If we plug in 0, we'd get a negative 5 times 7. That's bad, so we don't want this stuff in the middle. And then if we plug in 6, we'd get 6 minus 5, 1 times 13, which is good. So for function g, we can take anything that's smaller than negative 7 or bigger than or equal to 6. So the answer is these are not exactly the same function. They have different domains. And basically what you'd see if you drew a picture, well, this is going to be a really rough sketch, so don't hold me responsible for it being perfect. But this one would start at 5, and I think it would kind of go out like this. Uh, for g, we would see that exact same thing. It would be identical. But we would also see something over here starting at negative 7 and headed this way. So they are identical for part of the function, but then there's part of the function that's not the same. So not actually the same function. Um, for part b, switch colors. It's kind of similar thought process. B is actually, I think, a little less confusing. Uh, what happens here is the top factors, let's see if I can figure out what it is. I know I want a 3x and an x, and a 1 and a 3. Does that look true? I think so. Plus, minus. Okay, so then my outside is 9x, negative 9x, and my inside is 1x, and that does add up to negative 8. 
And what happens is I can cancel the x minus 3. So this is really what it's asking. If you cancel that factor out, is it still the same function or not? And the answer is no. And here, it's easier to see. So this is just a line. So y equals 3x plus 1 easier to see than the last one, I think, because you can see that in this original statement of m, x is not allowed to equal 3. So when we go and cancel that factor out, we're actually losing a domain restriction. So there's nothing wrong. They're, they are identical functions everywhere except at 3, but right at 3, there's a hole in the graph. So that's the only difference between them. Everything else is the same, but they're still not the same function. And then, just to mix it up a little more, let's see, I think that's the color I like. Um, down here, I can cancel out a 2 minus x in the first one, and I can cancel out uh, an x minus 6 in the second one, and both of them turn into 3x plus 1, but we know that this leaves a little problem. So this one has a problem if x equals 2, so we would want to leave that out. And this one has a problem if x equals 6, so we'd want to leave that out. But I have forced both of those domain restrictions to apply to both functions. So basically, p looks like 3x plus 1 with a hole that doesn't it's supposed to go through the origin. Pretend it doesn't. goes through 0, 1 with a hole at 2. But then I forced a second hole at x equals 6, so this is now what p looks like. q, same line. This one comes with a hole at 6, but I forced it to have a second hole at 2. So this time they actually are the same. By forcing them both to have those holes in the graph, these are the same functions. Okay, hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching.